In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is uh, one of the major feasts of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it is the feast of the descent of the Holy Spirit on the disciple, the Holy Pentecost feast. And the church considered this feast is like uh, the birth of the New Testament church when the Holy Spirit came on the disciples to start their missionary work. I'm going to start with a little story that tells us a little bit about how to experience the presence of God. Two men were uh, having a chat together and the first man asked, how did you make all your money? So the second man told him, I formed a partnership with a wealthy man. So the first man told him, how did you do it? And the second one told him, he had the money and I had the experience. So the first man told him, and was it? a successful partnership and business between the two of you, he said it was a great business. We stayed together for one year. I started with the experience. I ended with a lot of money. And he started with a lot of money. And he ended with great experience. And some people look at it and say money is very important, but maybe we are wrong. Experience is something much more important that every one of us need. They need in every their life. Experience is a great teacher. We learn a lot through experience. And through experience, we go through our life in the church. We go to church, we pray, and sometimes we try to give our life to God. And unfortunately, he seems very far away. And for a lot of us, nothing changed or nothing happened. And for those people who do not feel any change in their life, through attendance of church, through practicing the rites of everything that we learned, this form of religion have never a spirit. It's a, you know, an inherited religion. You know, like you took it from your parent, their parent, your parent took it from your grandparents, and so on. It is just, a, you know, a hand-me-down religion. It is not personal. And each person has to have his own experience with God. And this is what makes the difference between, you know, an effective, you know, personal relationship for a person that he feel the power of God in his life and somebody who just practiced something that he inherited without spirit, without heart, without life into it. And Knowledge versus experience is something very important. One person was, uh, his name is Walter, and he was uh, invited to uh, a uh, uh, lecture about uh, astronomy. You know, like uh, the science of studying the, uh, you know, the stars and the planets and all of that. And he thought this was, will be something very you know, uh, helpful, and it will teach him a lot. And he entered into the lecture. The hall was full of people. And the lecture start, and unfortunately, it was very boring. The, the person who was giving the lecture was going through charts, was going through, you know, like a lot of numbers, but, you know, little by little, more and more feel disconnected from the speaker. And they felt it is getting boring more and more. And then, you know, this person 
uh, Walter, he, he went and he said, I cannot sit here anymore. He just got out of the lecture hall and it was night time. Uh, all what he did, you know, he started looking up to the sky, to the heaven, and he was amazed by the beauty of the stars and by the beauty of the vision at night and he was overcome by a breathless wonder. And this is what makes the difference. He experienced something beautiful about those stars, different from something very theoretical and very dry about that. And that's, you know, as I said, what makes the difference. There are people today who do the same with religion. For them, they stay inside. And they say it's too boring, it's too long, it is not, you know, any benef of any benefit to me. And that's why, because they concentrate on the mechanism of things. <laughs> they don't go outside and look at the stars like this man he did himself. You know, looking at the stars is much different than going through dry information. And in our church, we have a lot of beautiful stars. We have a lot of saints who have their life given for Christ, living experiences. We have, you know, like uh, something better than the theory. We have the experience. It is very important, you know, not the knowledge about God but it is more important than the intellectual knowledge about God, the knowledge of God, the knowledge, the personal knowledge of God himself. This is what <coughs> makes the difference. And we go through this in our life in the church. I take, for example, the time of the Holy Week. And the Holy Week is considered the peak of the spiritual year for all of us. The churches are full. Everybody is very emotionally connected to Christ who is suffering on our behalf. And we feel charged during this holy week. Soon as Easter comes and we finish the holy week, guess what? These churches who are full of people who are here, you know, after work, although they can be tired, although it can be a long day for them, they, uh, you don't find them. Most of them, you find the churches are empty. You find a lot of people who are not having the same connection that they have during the Holy Week. And what is the difference? The difference is that the Holy Week built for them emotions only. It didn't pass the emotion level into experience. And didn't pass the level of the belief and faith in the, the suffering Christ, it didn't go through the power of experiencing the resurrection and the power of the resurrection and what the resurrection can do to them, what the resurrection can do to their life, life of glory, hope, joy. And this is all come from what? From experience, from building faith, not from emotions. Because, as I said, lots of churches around us nowadays, they focus a lot on emotion. They can ignite you. And as soon as you leave the church, all this emotion, eh, go down, disappear. Why? Because we don't live by emotions. We live by faith. We live by experience and not any type of experience, personal experience with the Lord. And that's why God cannot be fully expressed or defined. Because we can read a lot about what is the definition of God. How God is expressed. But God can be experienced. He expressed himself in the, personal, in the person of Jesus Christ. He said, you know, I'm far away in the heaven. You know, people, you know, in the Old Testament, when they were you know, God was uh, manifested to them. It, he come on the mountain in the, you know, the shape of, you know, like uh, wind and fire and uh, thunderstorms. And it is something, you know, that is 
so scary for them. So this is not something that you know we read about. This is something that we experience, and that's why it is very important of us to experience that in our life. And uh, that's why God took flesh and became man, and we called him Emmanuel. And the meaning of Emmanuel, God is with us. We can see him. We can experience. If we go back to the disciples, when it was the beginning of their uh, mission work with Christ, we read about St. Andrew. And St. Andrew, his uh, brother Simon, Simon Peter, they were, he, Andrew was talking and he told him, I have found the Messiah, the Christ. I do not ask you to take to my word. I ask you to come and see for yourself. Come and see for yourself. This is what makes the difference. And when Peter, St. Peter, later on, he came and see how sweet is the Lord how beneficial and how, you know, a personal, you know, connection he has made with him, he, uh, he followed him. The same happened with the Samaritan woman. The Samaritan woman, Christ touched her heart. She was, you know, outcast by all her, you know, village. She was always choosing noon to come and fill her pot at the middle of the day and the heat of the day because she was outcast. She was not welcomed by her people. She was looked at as, you know, a harlot. But uh, Christ was very nice and sweet to her. He touched her heart. He built a connection and a relationship with her. And that's how she was, you know, converted into a missionary. She, you know, went and she told them, come and see a man who told me all what I have ever did. Can this be the Christ? And to the amazement, they accepted her words. Although she was never accepted by them, they accepted her words. And, and they said, what? Now we believe, not because you told us, for we believe ourselves. We have seen and heard him ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the savior of the whole world. This is what we mean by, this is what we mean by a connection. They saw in her how she was completely changed. They saw in her how much she was, you know, in amazement about, you know, him and his, the relationship with him. And the same we hear about from uh, Saint, uh, uh, Saint John. You know, Saint John in his first epistle, he said uh, that which we have heard, that which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon with our hands, we proclaim to you. It is completely different when you go and talk to somebody about something that you tried yourself, you have seen, you have heard, you have touched, and you are talking about a personal experience. It is completely different from what you, uh, you t that you never tried yourself. You never lived through or affected by yourself. And that's why our faith, it is based on Bible and sacred tradition. But don't forget that the Bible and the sacred and the tradition you know, came real when we experience God's presence and power and love personally in our life. It is not, you know, like something dry. It is not books and rites and, you know, just gestures that we are doing, you know, empty. Because all of this can be empty if we don't experience it ourselves. That's why David the prophet in one of his psalms, he said, O taste and see how good is the Lord. O come, taste and see how good is the Lord. It is like when you go to a restaurant and you enjoy a great, you know, meal at that restaurant. And you go home, tell your family 
oh, I cannot, you know, describe to you how this meal was wonderful, was tasty, was, uh, you know, like uh, uh, so delicious. But uh, you can keep explaining, but different from uh, telling them, I'm going to take you and let's go together to this restaurant, taste and see how good it is. Taste and see how good it is. Uh, and this is what happened. What happened, you know, like, uh, just skip that, sorry. I just talked about that. This is what happened on the Pentecost day. This is what happened when the disciples were gathered in the house of St. Mark and the upper room and the came himself and he wanted to, you know, to them to experience something different that they never had before. And he told them in the book of Acts, we read about that in the book of Acts chapter 1, it says, not to depart from Jerusalem, but to the promise of the Father. He told them, do not go out of Jerusalem, stay here, because I'm giving you the promise of my Father. What is the promise? He said, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized you with water. The baptism of John was just with water for the prayer. But what is new here? What is different here? He said, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. What is that baptism of the Holy Spirit? He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the world. And be careful, pay attention to the word, you have received power, you have rec or you shall receive power. This is what the Holy Spirit does in us. We experience power, we experience something that ignites us, and something that turns us into like a, a power machine, you know? So when the Holy Spirit came on the Pentecost day, he brought a new and powerful experience of God's presence and power to their life. They were listening to Christ. They were watching him do miracles. But now they felt this power that he was talking by, doing miracle by, they felt this power inside of them. They felt this power in their hands that they can use. And from that day on, they were never the same again. Those you know, simple disciples who were fishermen, who were maybe some of them uneducated, now they experience God in their life through the presence of the Holy Spirit as a powerful experience to them. And we felt this through, you know, trial. We tried. The one who talked about what he tried is St. Paul what he experienced. In many of his epistles, he said, eh, like in the epistle of the second epistle to Timothy, he said, I know whom I have believed. So I believe in, in God, but I know him. It is a somebody tried. And he also said, and we know that all things work together for the good of the, those who love God. How do you know that everything works for the good? I tried it myself. I saw God arrange everything in my life for my best. So I know what I'm talking about. I did it. He also said in 2 Corinthians, for we know that if our earthly house, the stand, this is meant by the body, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heaven. So I know the word, I know he it is experience. It is something that, you know, St. Paul tr tried. And every one of us can try. It is an inner experience of living, living by faith in God. It's not only that you talk about faith, but you try it faith. It is not only talking about the love of God, but you lived and tasted the love of God and the work of His Holy Spirit in your life. The experience it is not enough that the Christian believe that the Holy Spirit lives in him. This is what San Simeon said, one of the church saints. He said, the presence, that presence must be conscious experience. You know, you can say, I feel the presence of God, 
but it is different from you feel and you live the presence of God. They, uh, the only way, the best way to describe that is uh, through the pregnant woman, you know. As soon as somebody who was pregnant before become pregnant, they feel the life inside of them. You know, they feel something like powerful inside of them. You know, maybe men cannot, you know, feel that. But ladies, I'm sure that uh, this is something different. You see that you have something, you know, alive inside of you. you have something that is work, you know, moving and uh, giving you the feelings. This is what the Holy Spirit does in us. This is how the Holy Spirit can be powerful in us. And the experience is something that people, they want to hear not lectures about God. They don't want to go through arguments about God, but they want to hear witnessing about personal experience with God, experience of what God did for them and what they did for God. And the obvious experience about that are uh, our father, the martyrs. And the most recent one that we saw ourselves are the, uh, the Egyptian martyrs in Libya. We see that uh, it's not anymore something that we read about in books that has been happening like centuries ago. It is something that we see nowadays with people martyred for the name of Christ. What makes those people give their life for God? It is a, their personal experience. What makes them not being afraid? If somebody come and put a knife on your neck or a gun in your head and say, denounce Christ, will you be able to, denounce, to you know, uh, confess your belief or you will be scared and you say, I have to save my life, I, uh, I will denounce Christ. The difference is uh, the personal experience with God. When somebody lived the experience with God, he can never, you know, but say, this is my Lord and my God, I cannot denounce him. And this is what Pentecost did. Pentecost was the day on which the apostle experienced the God's powerful presence in their life through and it's not only something in history that happened, you know, 2,000 years ago. It is something that every one of us can experience because every one of us is a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us. And it is only up to you to it. The Holy Spirit, the chance to work by you and through you. It is only you who will ignite the Holy Spirit inside of you. Make the Holy Spirit you know, like fire inside of you, like a, uh, a power bank. You know, nowadays they have a, a charger for your phone or any uh, left, they call it power bank. And those power bank can be, you know, take you for hours and hours without your battery dying. Your power bank is the Holy Spirit. It's a power inside of you. I'm gonna uh, uh, conclude with uh, a story about uh, a man uh, who experienced the, the personal relationship with God. This person, it's from personal testimony. This man experienced, you know, he had uh, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, like uh, So he had to go to the hospital and he was sharing his experience through this hardship. I'm gonna read to you. He said, I was taken into a lead lined room containing a huge Eldorado gamma ray machine. This is one of the X-ray machines. And physiotherapist put me on the table and set things up for me for my treatment, carefully shielding all my body except the parts containing the deadly uh, malignant cells doing their devastating work. So he went into the room and he was afraid, you know, first time going through this treatment. The person, the, the nurse then left the room and the enormous door, there is a big door that uh, closed the room on him and quietly glided into place. Me in absolute silence. He felt, you know, I'm alone here 
and he start to feel more scared. This can be and often is a frightening experience to the patient. And then he saw a red light being turned on in the room and the, dark, the room started to get dark and the soft you know, news, uh, noise of the machine, the x-ray machine working through his body. He went through 36 treatment from this you know, uh, machine. And he said, each time I was, you know, it was a great blessing for me. It was a time of communion with Christ. He was alone, you know, feeling that he is in this room. Yes, he is scared, but he said, why don't I, you know, take advantage of this time and uh, have a personal interaction with God. It was a lonely place until I remembered that I was not alone, except that I was alone with God. What an opportunity for cleansing and healing. And during each treatment, I talked with him, knowing that he was listening. I asked for forgiveness, cleansing and healing. I asked him to pour into my being his own powerful, loving, healing rays, along with the gamma rays from the machine. I thanked him for the healing that has already begun and asked him to strengthen my weak faith. Assured that he was there, he was listening, and more often than uh, not uh, tears and gratitude ran down my cheeks. Never before or since I have felt closer to my God than through this time. My prayer ended, I am willing to accept whatever you have for me. And this experience he transferred to somebody else. You know, like his, uh, uh, toward the end of this treatment, these sessions, his wife was waiting for him outside. And here come another lady who is starting this time. The lady was so frightened and uh, afraid. And here is uh, his wife, you know, comforting her and telling her about the experience of her husband and she, uh, she told her, don't worry, Christ is there with you. And to the amazement, after the visit of this lady, she felt the same. She connected with God. She, you know, felt him through, you know, this hardship. And this is uh, what we talk about personal experience. That it's not only through hardship that we taste and see how good is the Lord, but we see and experience him through our daily life, through his, the power of his Holy Spirit in our heart. And this is what we mean by Pentecost, the descent of the Holy Spirit and the working of him in our hearts and in our life. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. And happy Pentecost for all of you.